Hello everyone. This presentation will be covering the concept known as thermal expansion. Thermal expansion is the increase in size or volume of a material as its temperature increases. For the purpose of this presentation, we will be looking at solids, liquids, and gases, as well as the equations necessary to solve thermal expansion-based problems such as area, linear, and volumetric expansion. Our presenters from Group 10 are Simon Cardenas, Guadalupe Mendoza, Jose Vega, Angela Salas, and Frida Mendoza. Before we get started with thermal expansion, let's cover some important information regarding heat and temperature so we can better understand this concept. What is heat? Heat is the transference of energy between two materials of different temperatures and flows from a high to low temperature through a process called thermal equilibrium. An easy way to remember this concept would be to picture an ice cube that is melting when it is left out on a countertop. The colder the ice cube, the warmer air that is surrounding it, causing it to melt. What is temperature? Temperature is the measure of heat energy available for work within a system. Heat is the average kinetic energy of the molecules in the system. The greater the kinetic energy, the faster the particles are moving within an object. Looking at the ice cube we left on the countertop, as the ice heats up and it increases in temperature, the particles begin to move faster. This results in the solid becoming a liquid. As the particles in the solid heat up, they gain motion, which causes it to turn into a liquid. Here are some important conversion equations to determine temperature. As you can see, there are several different ones to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Kelvin, and Kelvin to Celsius. Generally, there are three types of kinetic energy uh, regarding motion. These are translational, rotational, and vibrational motion. Rotational motion in the same spot. Vibrational motion is the bending and stretching of the covalent bonds, as you can see, creating a vibration. These are the three types of kinetic energy of motion. total energy of an isolated system is constant. So I'm sure almost everyone has heard that energy is neither created or destroyed. This is because energy can only be transferred from one system to another. So if you imagine holding an apple, you can't see the apple's energy, but there's energy in the apple. And let's say the apple is a system and I'm a system. So when I eat the apple, the energy of the apple doesn't just disappear. What my body does is collects its calories and then converts the calories into energy so that I then can perform my daily activities and even do basics just as breathing. Thermal equilibrium. If we have two objects at two different temperatures and they're both touching, they're both going to convert into the same temperature eventually if they touch for long enough. So for example, if we have water and ice, ice is going to make the water get colder, but the water is going to make the ice get warmer and the ice will start to melt. So what's going to happen is that both of them are going to switch temperatures until they reach an equilibrium. So here we have the material coefficient chart. On the left, we have a list of substances, and right next to the list of substances, we have the coefficient of linear expansion. So just by looking at this chart, we can see that not every substance has the same expansion rate. So we can tell that there's substances that will expand at a higher rate than others, such as lead. Lead has a high expansion rate compared to window glass, so we have to keep in mind, 
because we're going to come back to this chart later and talk about this in a question. So just remember that the larger number means that it'll expand more. Uh, the main question for this presentation is what is thermal expansion? As the name implies, thermal expansion is a tendency of matter to change in its shape, area, volume, or density as it responds to a change in temperature. This usually does not include the five transition phases. Uh, in this presentation, we will cover linear area and volume. So, as I mentioned in the previous slides, all phases of matter expand with higher temperature because the molecules gain energy and start to move. Linear expansion is one of the first examples we will be discussing in this presentation. Uh, linear expansion is described, as, is described as the changing length of a solid material, delta L in the equation, when it is heated or cooled. This is equal to the linear expansion coefficient for that material. The expansion coefficient can be found in the table Guadalupe or the chart Guadalupe showed in her slides. Uh, and whenever that coefficient is multiplied by the original length, which is the alpha L, zero, times the change in temperature, you get the linear expansion of the material. So this is another breakdown of the linear expansion equation. The delta L, which is a change in the length, we can get that by subtracting the final length minus the initial length, delta L0 being the original length for the initial length in meters. It, the change in temperature in the equation can be calculated just like the length, the final temperature minus the initial temperature in Kelvin. And if you have, let's say, if you have the temperature in, in Celsius, uh, you can use the equations that Simon provided in the first slides to convert to Kelvin. And the alpha is a, is a linear expansion coefficient, which you will also get from the chart that Guadalupe provided in her slides. So alpha will be a given so don't worry about the linear expansion coefficients. Those will be given to you. So volume expansion. This is another type of expansion when the addition or subtraction of temperature to a solid or liquid happens. When this happens, volume expansion is equal to the coefficient for that material multiplied by the original volume of that material multiplied by the change in temperature. So if you notice, we have a repeating variable here, which is the expansion coefficient. The expansion coefficient variable, you will get it from a chart, just like Lupita explained. I cannot stress this enough because several times I found myself trying to find the expansion coefficient, and I was trying to solve for it, but it was given to me, so pay attention, don't, don't get ahead of yourself when solving problems. So another breakdown of the expansion, expansion equation, very similar to the linear expansion equation, you will have the, the, the delta V, which is the change in volume, the delta T, the change in temperature, and beta, which will be the expansion coefficients. And those values will be dependent on the material that you will use, and they will usually be given to you. 
and just plug in those variables. Back to explaining what the formula. Okay, so area expansion. It is also known as superficial expansion and the change in area compared to original area before he heating or cooling. Basically what it is, um, area expansion is when the object is just expanding uniformly, meaning in every side and angle. Its area along with the volume length and with an increase in temperature is what is changing. Is what is changing during the area expansion process. And it is it also has a relationship to um, linear expansion due to its change of length. We will now be going to the next slide to explain more of what, of what the formula is, including how it is also related to linear expansion. Back to explaining what the formula for area expansion is, as I said before, alpha A in the object and delta A over delta T is the rate of change in the area per unit temperature change. In the previous slide, the coefficient delta A over A was presented and that is actually the change in linear dimension. So this is the formula for area expansion alpha a equals one over a delta a over delta t um, alpha a represents the area thermal expansion coefficient the area thermal expansion coefficient is relating the change in a materials area dimensions to a change in temperature so the a represents the area of object in meters per squared temperature in kelvins I did see in the alpha A equals two alpha L. So usually for the relationship between area and linear expansion is due for isotropic materials and for small expansions, it is one half of the area coefficient. Solids have their own shape. Uh, for example, a pencil keeps its shape when you write with it. Um, and they tend to keep their shape when they're not constrained. Uh, solids can be best described by linear coefficient of thermal expansion. Okay. Have an aerial expansion that is nearly as twice as their linear expansion. Have a volumetric expansion that is very nearly three times their linear expansion. Wait, go back. <laughs> when, when solids are, heat, are heated, their atoms vibrate faster about their fixed points. Liquids, liquids tend to expand more than solids and like their molecules are farther apart than those of the solids and they do not have their own shape. Uh, as you may know, when you pour water into a container, either if it's a glass of water or something shaped differently, it tends to take the shape of that container that you put it in. And so they are best described by a volumetric coefficient of thermal expansion, beta. Gases have a thermal expansion that is best described by using the ideal gas law, which would be explained um, in the next in the next slide. And uh, the molecules and gases are further apart and they are weakly attracted to each other. And when you add more heat, heat causes And an ideal gas is defined as one in which all collisions between atoms or molecules are perfectly elastic and in which these there and in which there are no intermolecular attractive forces. So the ideal gas law here, it shows you the formula PV equals NRT, in which P um, means pressure, V means it's for temperature. Here are some examples. An object that has a high temperature will have high kinetic energy, which means 
that the particles will be moving faster. This is like, um, and when you blow into a balloon and like it has molecules, the gases of the molecules uh, move uh, faster. And whereas an object that has lower temperature will have less kinetic energy, which means the particles will be moving more slowly. This could mean like a liquid. For our first question, which would be more accurate for all season outdoor use? A tape measure made out of steel or one made out of aluminum? So here we are going to use the charts that I mentioned earlier, the material coefficient chart. And if you feel like you're ready to answer this question, you may pause the video, but I will be continuing. Here on this chart, I have highlighted for you the two substances that were mentioned in the question. So what we're going to do is just compare the two numbers with each other. So we see that aluminum has the higher coefficient compared to iron. So this means that aluminum is going to expand more in heat. So if we're going to be working outdoors, especially in the summer, the aluminum one will probably face more damage than the iron one. So which one would you choose if you were at the store? we would choose the steel tape measure. Thank you for that explanation, Lupita. Our next example is volume expansion. Our question is, early in the morning when the temperature is 5.5 degrees Celsius, gasoline is pumped into a car's 53 liter gas tank until it's filled to the top. Later in the day, the temperature rises to 22 seven degrees Celsius. Since the volume of the gasoline increases more for a given temperature increase than the volume of the steel tank, gasoline will spill out of the tank. How much gasoline spills out of this, in, spills out in this case? So here the question is, the volume of the gasoline will increase with the temperature change from five degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. But the volume of the tank, which is made out of a metal or a plastic, it will also increase. But we inference that the tank's volume will increase at a slower rate than the volume of the gasoline. Therefore, it will increase. So, if we work out this question, our answer is: since we know that expands, since we know that expansion is due to temperature change, the equation we will be using is the volume equation. So, for beta, our volume expansion coefficient is dependent on the material used. In this case, we will use both the one for the gasoline and the one for the steel tank in liters. And then we will multiply that by the change in temperature, which is the final, the 27 minus the 0.5 Celsius, but we will convert that into Kelvin times the volume of the tank. What we get is that the change in volume for the gasoline is 0.98 liters, and for the steel tank, it is 0 0.037 liters. In order to get the answer, we must subtract the steel gas uh, uh, variable minus the gasoline to see how much will will how much gasoline will, spills out. So our answer will be the subtraction of the change in volume of the steel gas minus the volume of the change in the change in volume of the gasoline minus the change in volume of the steel gas. And there in the parentheses you have the equation. So if your answer looks similar to that, great job. An example of area expansion. At 20 degrees Celsius, the length of a sheet of steel is 50 centimeters and the width is 30 centimeters. If the coefficient of linear expansion for steel is 10 to the negative 5 degrees Celsius, negative 1, determine the change in area in the final area at 60 degrees Celsius. You can go ahead and pause the video to solve this example. 
So to solve this equation, the needed information will be the temperature change, initial area, and the expansion coefficient of steel. The final temperature change in this case was 60 degrees Celsius and the beginning was 20 degrees Celsius. In the end, we get 40 degrees Celsius. The initial area was the length times width, which was 50 centimeters times the 30 centimeters, equaling to 1500 centimeters squared. The steel line expansion coefficient for steel is alpha equals 10, negative 5 degrees Celsius to the negative 1. Overall, this was the needed information to get the change in area. And in order to get the change in area, we would need to multiply the 2 times 10 to the negative 5 degrees Celsius, negative 1, times the 1,500 centimeters squared and the 40 degrees Celsius, in which the answer ends up being 1.2 centimeters squared. In order to get the final area, it would equal area 2 equals area 1 plus delta A, in which this case it will be 1,500 centimeters squared plus 1.2 centimeters squared, equaling to 1,501.2 centimeters squared. Awesome. Thank you, Angela. So finally, we have the citations. Uh, this is the work cited that we put together from some of the different sources uh, we used to build our presentation. Uh, with that, that concludes our presentation on thermal expansion from Group 10. Thank you. You're welcome.